It happened one late evening here at this JCPenney behind me where two, no, let me stop. <laughs> no, it's, it's about maybe two something. I don't know. I, I really couldn't sleep. I just feel like talking to you guys. Why does every city look like this? Every city has this suburban sprawl with shopping malls, food places, and every, everyone is like rushing to go nowhere fast in their cars. As I've been getting more into urban planning because I'm getting closer to getting my e-bike, I've been looking at the city planning and looking at how cities are mapped out and boy, you don't really notice it, but it is hell. Most towns, most major cities have four or five lanes. You got to jet across because they only give you 20, 30 seconds. And then when, you, when you're walking across them, cars are still turning, waiting for you to go so they can zip past you. It's just relatively unsafe, if I'll be honest. And in West Texas, man, these drivers here, let me not say that. There are some great drivers, obviously. But some of them have this mentality that they don't have any, any courtesy for the pedestrian, if you will. And so, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Look at this parking space. It's big ass mall. I'll just walk to the mall. It's big ass mall. Nothing but empty concrete. Like, look how much. And I mean, I will say here, as opposed to other places I've traveled, I will say that these malls are more filled with people it's not justified but it, it is more filled with people so i can see people coming here and kind of hanging out but oh that brings me to another point i know people talk about millennials and the younger generation you know we're always on our phones we're always looking down texting you know we're always indoors online we have nowhere to go we have nowhere to go there's something called a third place. I don't know if you heard of it. If not, look it up. It's a third place. I like think about the show Friends and how they had a place where they would meet up, where people just meet up. Back in the day, when I was in, back in the day like I'm old, back in the day in high school, we kind of had that place. College kind of had that place, but now there's nowhere to go. That's, I mean, Every city is kind of like that. So as I edit this video, I forgot to mention, think about 2020 and think about the pandemic and COVID and how the third place went from being this place that we've met up to being non-existent in places that were shut down because they were unsafe. Everything we do nowadays is car reliant. Everything we do nowadays is just car reliant. Like you can't really do anything unless you live in, again, a city like Portland, Seattle, you go overseas, Paris, they just approve hundreds of millions for uh, bike lanes. You think about places like Copenhagen, Denmark. Those places are there that are built with pedestrians and bikes in mind. Like, those places are awesome. And I'm not shitting on the USA. I'm just saying we have sidewalks, so I'll, I'll, I'll grant them that. We do have sidewalks. I'm not just trying to shit on the city. We do have sidewalks, but there's either two things, either... The sidewalk ends and it doesn't say sidewalk in. There's no sign. It just ends. Or when you're crossing it, cars are aggressive. <laughs> so as I get closer to my e-bike, I've, I've just been hyper conscious and hyper aware of the streets, the signs, how everything moves and just contemplating if I still want to get the e-bike, which I, I probably am. The benefits of cars, of course, right? People say, you can go anywhere you want. You can do this. The cost of them, I don't think, pe I don't think people realize the, the cost of a car. It's not you just drive it off the lot and, oh, you're good. Most people spend anywhere from, this is just me taking a guess, but I'd say anywhere from eight to maybe 11000 a year on their car. When you, when you factor in insurance, gas, repairs, right? A car note, obviously. And so I've thought about just completely ditching my truck. Now, I know that might sound radical or 
no, it's West Texas. Like, that's crazy. Why would you do that? I'll talk to some friends. They're like, be careful on your bike. Like, you don't want to, you know, get ran over. I know people have fears of things like that. But my friend, he actually, well, I guess new friend, uh, I found out that he actually rides a bike around. Like, oh, dude, you know, when you get yours, like, let me know. We can, you know, go on trails. We can, you know, just ride across the city and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, man, that's cool. But I've thought about maybe if not ditching my car, getting something to supplement it. Just something in the meantime where I can, I don't have to take my truck everywhere. Because I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I just get tired of driving. I just get tired of having to get in my truck and drive and you know, sometimes it's like a headache. Parking is a headache. Yeah, I could get a smaller car, so I I understand that, but you get what I mean. If I can take my e-bike, because most e-bikes have class one, two, and three, uh, street legal, you don't have to get it registered or anything, which is cool, no tags, no license, no registration, which I didn't even include in the cost and the list of everything, of the upkeep of a car, but you don't need that for an e-bike. Most of them go 20, 28 miles per hour. Some of them can go faster if you unlock them. But for general purposes, 28 miles per hour, class 3, at least the ones I'm looking at. 50 to 60 miles on a battery. Battery charges, 5 to 6 hours, right? Why not? Why not, man? I know there's, there's risk with everything. There's no sense in me putting all this money into a truck, man. Regardless if it's older, regardless if it's a 2023. People wouldn't feel so shut in where they feel like they have to drive everywhere. To the gym, to the coffee shop, right? Think about this. To the gym, to the coffee shop, to your job. If you want to hang out with a friend, they live across town. You, If you're not, uh, if you don't have a car or your public transit, don't get me started on public transit here. But pretty much non-existent. But if you don't have, your city doesn't have good transportation in that way you have to call a friend either pick you up take an uber or something which i'm i'm fine with taking an uber or a lyft but again you have to get in the car to go everywhere if we had somewhere or a place or the cities were just built better where we can all conjugate into one place you know again like denmark places in denmark and the thing about it is we have companies like ford tesla Chevrolet, all these companies pushing more SUVs and trucks on the road, especially in West Texas, where it's straight oil city, you see primarily trucks and SUVs. It's because with cars, you don't have to, trust me, I've been doing a deep dive in this. With cars, they're not as heavily regulated. And technically, an SUV is counted as a what is it called? It's counted as a light truck. Most people's argument for having it is, of course, if you have a family or they want space to be off the ground, they want to be able to see, they want to feel safer. I understand those points. Those points are valid. However, and so that's what I'm contemplating right now. Is there a fix? Yes, I do think there's a fix. I think maybe myself and some others, maybe I can find out who's on the council here, maybe I can talk to them, who's over the urban planning. These cities that we're in are just not just not made for it. There's no if, ands, buts, there's no way around it. It's plainly put that these cities are not made for it. And just something to think about. Okay, I am getting a little sleepy now, so I'm going to sleep. Good night.